if the obvious is trade was Phillies acquire right-handed hitting bench outfielder Baltimore Orioles acquiring a starter who can suck up some innings might be number two and Eflin provides just that for the Orioles who have really really struggled in the starting rotation over the last month if you look at the full season numbers it's really not too bad but I mean trim that thing down to June 1st and the O's have been very not good yeah and I would just say that like he, by the way, also like a controllable pitcher, right? I think that when we think about the Orioles and and what they have the prospects to acquire, they should be able to, you know, play in a little bit of a different market. And by the way, a, a pitcher who's making real money next year too, right? This is another sign that the Orioles are maybe in a different era now with uh, David Rubenstein as their owner. So that is certainly encouraging to be able to take on someone who Eflin last year was amazing. This year he's had an interesting year because what Zach Eflin has done this season is is stop throwing balls, basically. He has gone full George Kirby. Now, he's not had George Kirby results, but he even... I know last year he was not walking anyone. Last year he had a you know a 3.4% walk rate, which is one of the best in baseball. Now it's 2.8. He is just pounding the zone. The results have not been nearly as good this year. You know, his ERA is over four. Now, that doesn't sound that bad, but with the offense being down now, a 4.09 ERA is below league average. So we have to keep that in mind. The strikeouts are also notably down from last year, but he throws a ton of different pitches. I have to imagine the Orioles think that he feel fit very well in that ballpark. He's generally been very durable. Um, and, and yeah, he's, I mean, they desperately need a starting pitcher to have one that helps not just this year, next year makes a ton of sense. My grade, if I were to grade all these trades, which I don't, uh, would be incomplete. And that is because if Zach Eflin is the best starting pitcher, the Orioles get this deadline, that's a disappointment. If yeah. they get somebody better than him and Eflin, then it's a win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's fair. And as we know, um, as we flip to the prospects here quickly, because, this is exactly the kind of deal that exemplifies the depth, right? Oh because Horvath and Etzel in particular, let's just knock them out of the way. Both of them outfield prospects, very athletic college outfield recent draftees. Horvath, the guy at the University of North Carolina, who we've seen play a little bit of the infield. Etzel was a junior college guy that really popped once he transferred uh, to Southern Miss. And both of them have been like good like their numbers aren't amazing, but they're already, you know, climbing the minor league ladder pretty quickly. They're great athletes and there's there's a lot to like there, but like easy to trade away, right? Respectfully to these guys, but it's like it's very easy to put them together and get another team excited and not worry too much about it. This shouldn't have felt painful for G GM yes. Mike Elias is how I would yes. phrase it. Yes. yes. Ballmeister is maybe a little bit different, though. Yes, yes. Baumeister is the one that I have to imagine was a little bit more difficult to part with. This is a really interesting guy who was, as an amateur, was really known more as a catcher in high school. And then once he got on the mound full time at Florida State, it was like, oh, man, like this is there is a lot of untapped potential here. There have been a few prospects traded, pitchers prospects traded that we see Brody Hopkins, another one mentioned with a position player background, a guy who hasn't been pitching that much full time. And Baumeister, and now with the Orioles, he's really started to kind of put it all together. So that's one. We know the Rays have, have been good and acquiring a lot of interesting pitchers with interesting backgrounds. That's one that he's one of the Orioles' better pitching prospects. And that is something that, you know, they, in theory, will need in the next couple of years, right? I mean, the pitching, there is there are still, you know, some questions with that. So that is Jackson Baumeister and the Orioles' prospects heading to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay certainly one of the busier teams uh, that we have seen. And let's keep it going with the Rays, Jake, because they made two other significant trades, not, not just uh, Zach Eflin, dealing away reliever Jason Adam to the Padres and Isak Paredes today to the Cubs. I don't think we're shocked that after they traded Randy and after they traded Eflin, at this point, very few Rays trades are going to shock me in terms of going out the door. I think we'll probably see one or two more before Tuesday's deadline. Um, but let's talk about these these last two the, that we actually know have happened. I would like to start with Paredes. I am surprised they traded him just considering how much team control he has left. It felt like Paredes is someone who could have been a member of the next good Rays team easily. And so for them to trade someone with so much control left was surprising. What kind of player is Paredes? He was an all-star. Pull, happy, doesn't describe it. This is a yank and tank individual, okay? 
the Rays trading him away just shows how invested they are in like the next seven years, not just the next two seasons, if that makes sense. 